Hi everyone again. This is Unit 2 uh, for Module 4. So we are in Module 4, Art of Asia Part 2, East Asia 4, which is 4.04, Japan and the West. So now we're going to have a conversation about the Japanese art that was being made and how it influenced a lot of the major artists that you'll probably recognize the names of, um, and those were inspired by these works coming out of Japan. So for this unit, we have six core works um, and no supplemental work, so a little bit lighter there for this week. And all of these are actually painted works. So the date range um, it, for this unit is a little bit difficult to kind of uh, uh, be specific about, but there, this era of Japan interacting and being inspired, or I'm sorry, the West interacting with Japan and being inspired by it, uh, was first described by a French art critic and collector in 1872. So we'll call that the start date here. A location for all of these is mostly in and around the country of France. So our painted works include Claude Monet's La Japonaise and the Japanese Footbridge. We have Vincent Van Gogh's Self-Portrait with a, ba a Bandaged Ear, Mary Cassatt's The Coiffure, and Henri Toulouse's Turek's Divan Japonaise, and Kuroda's Seiki's Lakeside. So Japan, as I mentioned in the previous video, finally did open its ports to Western trade in the mid-19th century, 1854 specifically, um, which actually did and those over 200 years of isolation um, due to the Tokugawa shogunate ruling body. So the fascination with Japanese art really boomed, um, and especially their culture. The West was very intrigued by the different art forms that they were seeing. It was very um, uh, contrasting to what they had been working with, and so this sort of new art form is introducing new ideas, new techniques, new media, um, and it was very, very popular. So known as Japonisme, uh, it was greatly influenced European artists in the late 19th century, and these artists were particularly inspired by their Japanese woodblock prints, which featured bold colors, unusual perspectives, and some interestingly flattened compositions. So very opposite to what these artists were working with. They were trying to achieve more depth, they were trying to achieve more texture, more color, more detail, and so now they're kind of incorporating a very contrasting style to what they had been used to so far. So the Japanese art emphasis on color harmony and composition definitely influenced the palette and stylistic choices of the Impressionists as well as the Post-Impressionists in the West. And the Paris Exposition, uh, Universelle, in 1867, also showcased Japanese art, um, which further promoted the cultural exchange and inspired Western artists even more. And so the Western appreciation for Japanese aesthetics definitely co contributed to a broader rejection of traditional European artistic norms. They're not necessarily staying within that carefully formatted European box and the Western um, uh, kind of uh, artistic approach that they had been really ingrained in previously. And now we are encouraging more experimentation. And so the technique of woodblock printing definitely influenced the Western printmaking as well, um, leading to new artistic expressions. So this interaction between the West and Japan was really, really pivotal for a lot of the big names in art history, Monet, Van Gogh, Cassatt, Toulouse-Lautrec. Um, so I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you again for Module 5. Bye, everyone.